and welcome to Atop the Fourth Wall, where bad comics burn. We've seen Batman and even Superman take on the Xenomorph, we'll be getting back to the latter later this year, but it's time to put the Dark Knight up against the other famous alien killer franchise, The Predator. Don't have much to say about the behind the scenes of this one, which is kind of odd when the collected edition contains two introductions and a foreword from the writer, Dave Gibbons, and none explain how the whole thing came about, but this one predates the crossover with Aliens by several years and is apparently pretty well liked, enough to have several sequels. If you're unfamiliar with the franchise, the Predator is an alien hunter who utilizes a lot of advanced technology to come after the deadliest prey of all. Man. Consequently, that's why the title Predator is a bit misleading, since essentially they're big game hunters rather than going after stuff for food or supplies. That being said, there's a lot of expanded universe material on the Predators, particularly thanks to Dark Horse Comics doing a lot of heavy lifting there, including the novelization of the comic Alien vs. Predator Prey, giving the species his actual name, Yaucha. For simplicity's sake, I'll just be referring to it as The Predator in the review, especially because the species name has never actually been set on screen. Although even if we disregard the expanded universe stuff, it's very clear just how much of this species' culture and technology are based around hunting, with one movie even suggesting that they get more advanced because of them encountering something that manages to best them, and thus they have to think up new strategies and tech. And naturally, humans tend to be the ones they encounter a lot of throughout the franchise. Their favorite toys include personal cloaking devices, thermal vision, nets that tighten to the point of slicing into skin, plasma weaponry, and a voice modulator that mimics things people say, almost to mock their prey or lure them into traps. They definitely have some kind of code of honor. If you manage to kill a predator, they'll leave you be, even hand you a trophy from their collection as a reward. In general, they won't attack anyone they don't consider good sport, like a pregnant woman or someone unarmed, unless said unarmed person attacks them first. The Predator movies actually have a mostly good track record of them, so quick rundown on my thoughts on all of them. The original, and arguably the best. One of my favorite movies of all time. Very quotable, the characters aren't stupid, and that raises the tension, and still holds up pretty damn well after all these years. There are a few lines that are iffy, but that's also just the crappy culture of the time. Still recommend it, though. Pretty damn good, and changes things up by moving from a South American jungle into a city. You wouldn't think that Danny Glover would be able to fill Schwarzenegger's shoes as the lead, but it works. The ending shot featuring a xenomorph skull as a bit of set decoration on the Predator ship helped cement the eventual Alien vs. Predator franchise, and while it has its issues, it's still pretty fun. Already gave my thoughts on this when I briefly touched on all the Aliens movies. Overall good, I get why some people don't like it, but honestly, I find it to be pretty enjoyable. Same as the last one, still haven't seen it, suspect I'd hate it. While in many ways a rehash of the original movie, the fun factor is high, and I find myself re-watching it more often than you'd think. Great characters, once again most of them being very intelligent, and we see the Predators try some new tricks while setting up some weird stuff happening in their culture. The only odd thing I can say about it is just that I don't like Adrian Brody's eyebrows. Weird, I know, but something about the way that Adrian Brody's face is arranged, you know, his eyebrows arcing inwards, makes his resting face look perpetually sad. He does great in the movie, but his eyebrows always just feel at odds with his tough, badass performance. <laughs> Putting aside that the title is terrible because it leads to confusion about which movie you mean, this is half of a good movie. All the stuff about the Predator Civil War, the government learning about Predator tech and all that, interesting and kind of carrying on some stuff from Predators. But then there's a bunch of wacky morons being led by our main character who's trying to find his son, who is autistic, and apparently according to this movie, autism is an evolutionary superpower. Yeah, no. That part is terrible, and it drags the whole thing down. Damn good! It's a wonderful shakeup to have someone competent, but still overall less skilled taking on the Predator. And an earlier, less technologically advanced Predator than what we've seen before. All the old, familiar tools and tricks feel fresh as a result, and we just get a great character arc and some wonderful moments. Highly recommended. One last thing I'll say before we begin, Predator is one of the weirdest franchises ever because it loves being self-referential, and the fans seem to love it being self-referential, too. A lot of times people will hate it when a franchise just repeats the same lines over and over, but Predator is one of those cases where it's like, Ooh, they said the thing! Yay! If it bleeds, we can kill it. If it bleeds, we can kill it. Over here. Over here. They were shooting in all directions. Shooting in all directions. Come on, come on! 
Kill me, I'm here! Kill me! Come on, come on, come on, come on. Do it. No! No! Do it now! Kill me! Ugly motherfucker. Rose with you. You are an ugly mother. You are one ugly motherfucker. Anyway, let's dig into Batman vs. the Predator number one and see how many of those lines get repeated in here, too. a trade, so no looking at the covers, though admittedly the trade's cover isn't that interesting. Just Batman and the Predator about to punch each other while being way in each other's personal space. We open in a boxing match to determine the heavyweight boxing championship of Gotham City. According to Dave Gibbons, this was intentionally meant to evoke the Predator ethos. You find the biggest, toughest guy, and you knock him down to prove you're better. However, the match itself isn't relevant to the story, as we instead cut to a guy who owns a junkyard watching the match on TV. However, his dog keeps howling. Quiet, Satan! Go steal Spider-Man's marriage or something, jeez! He notes that something has spooked the dog, but he just wants to watch the fight, so he kicks the dog out. Though I'm not sure if the dog is entirely real, since this panel is showing it falling out of the guy's trailer. Help, I'm falling at a 60 degree angle, breaking all the laws of physics. However, when the dog suddenly goes quiet, the guy realizes something is up, and he grabs his shotgun to go investigate. Indeed, the poor dog is dead, and so is he, as the Predator's trademark three-dotted laser sights take aim and he goes splat. The Predator enters the trailer as one of the boxers, King, is interviewed about his victory. The Predator taking notice of the TV and taking some of the words for himself. Congratulations, champ. This Predator is less about the hunt for living beings and more about the hunt for proper polite etiquette. Back the fight, the Gotham mayor is hobnobbing with Alex Yeager, a gangster who's been investing in another rich guy's company, the Squire Corporation. They spot Bruce Wayne with Commissioner Gordon and say hi, but Gordon makes it no secret that he knows about Yeager's criminal dealings. Gordon, I've warned you before about these outbursts. The Squire Corporation does not consort with criminals, Commissioner Gordon. As a corporation, we commit our own crimes, thank you very much. While Gordon heads off, they invite Bruce to come with them to an after-party celebrating Jaeger's boxer winning. Broden, a rival gangster who is backing the other boxer, Bull, storms his way through, obviously pissed by how things went. Bruce, meanwhile, heads to his car with Alfred. Oh, Master Bruce? No! The great philanthropist Alex Jaeger has invited me to his victory celebration! It's my night off, Alfred! It's time to get crunk! Philanthropist, sir. I understand he was some sort of gangster. He is, Alfred! Gotham's biggest! The view from the top should be quite illuminating. Thinking of starting a second career as a gangster, Alfred? It's not a bad idea to diversify my income streams! We cut over to Marcus King, our new heavyweight champion, as he enjoys being with his girlfriend Lita in their penthouse. They mention how they're alone, save for Jaeger's bodyguards at the elevator. Lita saying that they're unnecessary because who would try to pick a fight with the champ? But of course the answer to that is the Predator, who comes crashing down through the skylight. Being the champ, Marcus tries to defend himself with... a lamp. Now as the premier lamp reviewer, gotta say, that lamp is not good for self-defense. And I'm right about that, as the Predator kills Marcus with the ever-tightening net. Still, he gets in the dialogue reference before he dies, so that's a plus. Lita fled to the bathroom and ended up watching all this. Convenient! She's right near the toilet so she doesn't piss herself in fear. 
Having a slightly better night is Bruce Wayne, talking with Raymond, the guy from the Squire Corporation, about how Jaeger has become an investor in the company, but they're interrupted by Alfred informing Bruce that he has a prior commitment. And let's take a moment here to appreciate the art by brothers Andy and Adam Kubert. Andy handling pencils, Adam inks and lettering. As well as colors by Sherilyn Van Valkenburg. I almost missed it right away because as I'm writing a script, my eyes slide from the comic to the Word document so I can miss details. But in this shot, not only do we have the bat signal behind Alfred to indicate what the prior commitment is, but we also see Jaeger getting whispered to by someone, no doubt informing him of the same thing about Marcus getting murdered. It's just nice, brief visual storytelling that I don't highlight very often, mostly because this show is usually about crappy books that have less impressive visual storytelling. Bruce changes into his costume in the car as Alfred briefs him about something occurring at the Plaza Hotel. I gather our leading pugilist was involved though the commissioner is hardly in the habit of lighting the signal for mere fisticuffs. Let's not be too hasty. If boxing was involved, it's possible Mr. T and his superpowers were a part of this. At the crime scene, we quickly learn that the bodyguards were killed too. Batman arrives as another detective explains to Gordon what happened. The killer came in the skylight and forced King upside that wall. Marks on his body look like a net was used. A net? No doubt some kind of fishing-themed supervillain commissioner. Check the phone book for anyone whose last name is Fisher, Rod, Hook, or Tackle Box. Cut him to the bone. Then his... his head and spinal column were removed. He died hurting. Hurting a lot. Yeah, this is why doctors use anesthetic before they remove your head and spinal column. We also learned that they can't find King's trophy belt. Or his hands. I've got it! King's hands murdered him, thinking that they did all the work, and thus they deserved the belt! This is why I'm the world's greatest detective! The obvious suspect is Broden, especially since the two crime bosses have a history in their gang war. Broden losing two brothers, Jaeger his son in his right eye. And while they had a truce, obviously the boxing match meant more than just a boxing match. As Jaeger arrives, Batman swings off to go pay Broden a visit. The Predator watching all this from above. He's not studying Batman or anything, he just dropped his keys during the attack and is really embarrassed about going back down to get them. Over at Broden's gym, he's berating Bull for his failure during the match, saying that Jaeger brought in an out-of-state fighter as a way of declaring war again. He's showing his muscle! Trying to make me look small! I don't know how that can be, dude. Muscle figures are pretty small as it is. Batman arrives and suggests that Broden killed Marcus, which of course Broden denies. Instead, all the goons in the gym, some of whom are wearing boxing training gear of course in the middle of the night, attack Batman and get their asses kicked. Even Bull wants to step in, but his trainer holds him back. You're in no shape, Bull. Guy's a pro. Walk like a butterfly, sting like a bat! It bat sting, right, Alfred? Yeah, bat sting! After he throws his cape up into the air for no reason, Batman tells Broden that Jaeger is not going to stop their little Cold War just because he's down a boxer. But that if he didn't murder him, he should be worried because someone out there doesn't like fighters. Some predators focus on people with military or combat training. This one's like, man, I'm going to take on the real deadliest game. People who punch each other with cushioned gloves. The Predator pursues Batman, but true to the Dark Knight's skills, the Predator actually loses him as he slips back into his car and changes into Bruce Wayne. Then he kills a cat because he feels like being a dick. Back at Wayne Manor, Alfred requests that they remove all the hunting trophies from the study, given both the difficulty in dusting them, and that it's not really something he should feel proud of. You're right, Alfred. Clear them out. Apart from the gun, that is. If there's one thing I like decorating my house, it's guns! Man, remember when I used to use guns, Alfred? I am the world's greatest detective! Ah! <sighs> God, I'm so good at this, Alfred! Okay, it's more that apparently the old gun had actually aided them in solving a case at one point, so it's potentially useful as well as being more of a trophy for Bruce's detective work in general. As Bruce talks about the few bits of evidence they do have on King's murder, the bat signal is once again lit. On a special channel, he's informed where to go. Broden's gym. Gordon has been called to the mayor for a chewing out, so the detective who was around earlier briefs Batman. The trainer from earlier survived and is able to tell them that while he couldn't see what was killing all the trained fighters, he says he's blind, but it's not clear if he's fully blind or just hard of sight, it was relentless. The men pleading for mercy before they were sliced to ribbons. And just like King, Bull's head and hands were taken. The Predator then stood next to him and, instead of killing him, just used Batman's voice to say, Open season. Of course! 
It's Elmer Fudd again! Broden wasn't around at the time, apparently going to see his mother on Sundays. For some reason, despite the Predator sparing the trainer before, he suddenly shoots a plasma bolt through the guy's heart from a rooftop. Best guess is the Predator left him alive as bait initially. In any case, the SWAT team that was there opens fire on the roof until Gordon has to scream at them to hold their fire since there's a street full of people down there and they don't want a massive shootout. That man, despite getting the targeting dots on his chest, just stands defiantly and stares right at where the Predator is partially decloaked and it decides to just Go away. Well, consider yourself conquered, I gotta go. Batman explains his logic to Alfred in the cave later. After all, the killer could have shot me the previous night. He was close enough to hear my voice, but now I'm certain there's a macabre logic to all this. He likes bats as much as I do. He says that the boxers were all killed face-to-face, -face, defeated in hand-to-hand -hand combat, the two guards were just shot, and the blind former fighter is passed over and then casually killed. Our murderer is choosing his prey, acting within some savage code of honor, which means I probably can't get him to kill one face for me. The news reports that Raymond has arranged for a meeting between Broden and Jaeger to discuss what's going down and make sure peace is maintained. But Bruce is more interested in the clues discovered. Rust flakes at both the gym and the penthouse. The rust contained automobile paint and mud that can only be found east of the Gotham River, plus the rust is magnetized, which Bruce suspects is a result of a junkyard's electromagnet. He's sending Alfred off to look around a bit while he heads to the meeting, figuring that the violent power struggle might be irresistible to the killer. Because there's no better sport than two guys yelling at each other from across a table. He goes there first as Bruce Wayne to plant a listening device on the pretense of talking to Raymond about some charity work, then changes into Batman after the two arrive. Broden accuses Jaeger of doing this, but Jaeger actually says that he doesn't believe Broden killed his man, that there's a third party at play. And the Predator arrives to confirm that! Batman swings in as the bodyguards are all killed. Jaeger is apparently killed too, though I couldn't tell. And the Predator reveals itself. However, before our title fight can start, Broden pulls out a shotgun and blasts the hunter out the window. The police, being present on the ground, storm in soon after. Batman finds some of the glowing green blood of the Predator. The killer was here, and he's powered by Mountain Dew. Alfred reports that the third junkyard he visited, Pickett's Salvage, was locked and deserted, without even a dog barking in the place to guard it. Our hero breaks in and soon discovers the dead owner of the junkyard, his dog, and the skeletal remains of the victims. He waits for the Predator to return, who soon does and treats his injury. Rod Tackle Box! We beat it last! It even takes off its mask, though Batman doesn't seem to have much reaction to its alien appearance. I have fought crocodile men, trench coat guys who quote Aristotle, deadly bee weapons, and rock and roll. This is pretty grounded, all things considered. He throws out a smoke capsule, but the Predator spots him in the act, tossing one of its slicing boomerangs at him. It strikes Batman in the leg, and the fight begins proper, Batman using the junkyard's contents to lure it over to the electromagnet and dropping a ton of junk on it. He goes over to see if it's down, but the Predator shoots its plasma bolt at him. It misses... Just barely, singeing Batman's face and knocking him down. And so our comic ends with the Predator seeming to have Batman at its mercy. Sort of off. This guy doesn't have a title belt, what a ripoff! This comic is pretty good. It's the first of a three-issue miniseries, so a lot of it is set up and an initial mystery that, of course, if you're already familiar with the franchises in question, isn't really much of a mystery. Still, it works in that way so that if you're not familiar with the Predator, it's just Batman fighting a weird, intelligent creature with some advanced abilities and tech. The fight between them at the end is a bit on the short side, but that's because, aside from it being the first issue, fights with the Predator usually go one of three ways. It runs away, you kill it, or it kills you. So this is to establish just how tough an opponent Batman has here. When he fought the Xenomorphs, they're somewhat intelligent animals, whereas the Predator is an opponent that can think and reason and outmaneuver. Plus has tools better than anything on Earth. The coloring is a bit on the dreary side, though understandable given the dark color palette for Batman in the city at night. Overall, the art is pretty decent. Not a fan of some of the shots of characters' lips, very puffy in spots, particularly in close-ups, but that's pretty minor in comparison to all the great attention to detail for storytelling. Just a good, solid book that we'll be coming back to in the future. Next time, Patreon-sponsored review as we look at a few episodes of the original Ben 10 cartoon.
Sir, if I may say so, these things of your grandfather's. Can one really be proud of such mementos these days? You're right, Alfred. I should be cutting off the heads of my enemies to mount there instead. Good idea! Hello, my friends. Please take a moment to like this video, subscribe to the channel, and click the bell for notifications on new video releases. If you'd like to support future videos, you can check out my Patreon or purchase a t-shirt via Teespring or Shark Robot. Thanks for watching!